some of you may have seen my previous talks about homogeneity, um, but uh, that project's now finished, and now I'm working on testing dark energy with galaxy uh, peculiar velocities. Uh, so I'm working with um, Mr. Stavely Smith and Peter Quinn here at ICRA, and also Tamara Davis at the University of Queensland. So we have a standard model of cosmology uh, known as Lambda CDM. Um, and this is a pie chart of what we understand the contents of the universe to be in Lambda CDM. And observations show us that about three quarters of the universe is made up of something called dark energy. And dark energy is whatever is causing the universe to accelerate. So some of you may have seen that last year the Nobel Prize in Physics uh, went to um, the uh, discoverers of the accelerated expansion, showing how important this discovery is. And one of the main goals of one cosmology is to try to work out what dark energy is. So there's a number of possibilities for what dark energy could be. In the standard model, it's attributed to Einstein's cosmological constant, lambda, and this is, uh, it acts like a vacuum energy, um, like an en energy density of space. Uh, but there are other possibilities. For example, there could be some exotic new form of energy um, that's causing the accelerated expansion. Or it could be that gravity, um, or our theory of gravity, breaks down on very large scales. So it, we know that general relativity holds extremely well on solar system scales, um, but it could be that on much larger scales, much larger than galaxies, um, it actually breaks down. And we need a modification of um, our theory of gravity to explain the universe. Uh, so my work is basically trying to um, distinguish between these different models and try to work out what's the correct one. So I'm using galaxy velocities as a probe of dark energy. Um, so galaxies have two components of velocity. They have an expansion velocity due to the expansion of the universe. So that's always away from us because the universe is expanding. But also uh, they have a peculiar velocity and this is caused by gravity. So um, the the gravitational pull between different galaxies will pull them towards each other. And so we have these additional motions as well as the expansion velocity. Now because these um, velocities, these peculiar velocities, are caused by gravity, that means we can use them as a tracer of the matter distribution. Um, and you can actually use them to map out the underlying um, matter field of the universe. Um, this is because uh, the velocity field is directly proportional to the density field via this equation, which is basically Poisson's equation. So here we're integrating over all of the masses that are contributing to a peculiar velocity. Um, and this term F here is the growth rate F, um, which is proportional to the matter density. And so you see here that velocities, because they're directly proportional to um, matter, means that they're unbiased, unlike galaxies. And that's, whoops, that's important because observations tell us that about 80% of the matter in the universe is actually dark matter, um, not galaxies. And so we understand that galaxies are located in the densest points of the underlying matter distribution. Uh, so this snapshot shows um, a map of the matter distribution at the present day um, as um, predicted in Lambda CDM. So this is a, the Millennium Simulation, which was a cosmological um, n-body simulation of dark matter. Um, and so, so because we, we think the galaxies are located at the densest points of this distribution, um, that's what we mean by galaxies being biased. So they're actually more clustered than this distribution. Um, but if we can measure peculiar velocities, then we probe this underlying mat dark matter distribution directly, which makes them really useful. Peculiar velocities are also particularly interesting because in recent years there seem to have been indications that peculiar velocities um, actually are in contradiction to the predictions of Lambda CDM, um, in particular via um, bulk flow measurements. So a bulk flow is the average velocity of a volume of space. And you can measure, for example, the bulk flow of the local universe by measuring the average peculiar velocity of all the galaxies in the local universe. Now, in 2009, a paper by Watkins and authors um, did this for um, a collection of peculiar velocity surveys. And what they measured was a bulk flow of 407 um, plus or minus 81 kilometers per second on scales of about 100 megaparsecs uh, towards a certain region of the sky. Now, in Lambda CDM, the linear theory prediction of what this should be is only 110 kilometers per second. And so this measurement was inconsistent with Lambda CDM at more than 98% confidence level. Now this is really surprising because almost all of the other probes that we have of cosmology are in extremely good agreement with Lambda CDM. For example, the CMB or um, galaxy surveys like Florian is working with or um, uh, supernovae measurements. Everything is in very good agreement with Lambda CDM. 
but now we have a probe that seems to be in disagreement with Lambda CDM. So this is really interesting. But what we need now is um, to have better peculiar velocity surveys. So I said that the Watkins result, or the, Rock, the Watkins paper used a collection of um, peculiar velocity surveys. And those peculiar velocity surveys were um, relatively small and um, had quite large errors, and they used a collection of them together to get a better result. But we can improve on that by having a much more complete and all-sky survey, which is um, homogeneously sampled um, and um, homogeneously selected. We also need to be able to probe deeper into the zone of avoidance. Um, so, so far, peculiar velocity surveys have had to avoid quite a large region of the sky where the Milky Way is. And this can introduce systematics if you're trying to make a bulk flow measurement. Um, so we really need to have better surveys and better um, modeling of the kind of systematics that are involved in making these kinds of measurements. So how do we actually measure peculiar velocities? Well, we need something called a distance indicator. So a distance indicator is something that lets us find the distance to a galaxy independently of its redshift. So examples are the Tully-Fisher relation, um, fundamental plane relation, or type 1a supernovae. So taking supernovae as an example, um, supernovae uh, are what are called standard candles, which means they always have the same brightness. So if we observe a supernova um, from the apparent brightness, we can tell how far away it is. So this is useful. So if we uh, say we observe a supernova within a galaxy, uh, we can measure that galaxy's peculiar velocity like this. So we know the total velocity of the galaxy along our line of sight from its redshift. Um, and from the distance given to us by the supernova, we, get, um, we can calculate what the expansion velocity of the galaxy is due to the expansion of the universe via Hubble's law. So Hubble's law is just um, expansion velocity is equal to the Hubble constant times distance. And so the difference between these two is just our peculiar velocity. Um, so what we need is to have a survey that's measuring these distance indicators. So I'm working um, partly with the SkyMapper Supernova Survey. Uh, so SkyMapper is an optical telescope at Siding Spring Observatory. Um, and it will be conducting a supernova survey uh, over the next five years, measuring about 150 supernovae per year over a total of 8,000 square degrees of sky. Um, so this will be a really good um, survey for, use, uh, for doing peculiar velocity measurements. Um, another survey which you've probably all heard of is Wallaby. Um, so Wallaby is going to be measuring, um, well, it's observing galaxies in radio. And um, observing galaxies in radio lets you measure the Tully-Fisher relation. So Wallaby is measuring about 500,000 galaxies in total. Um, and we'll be combining with photometry from SkyMapper to measure Tully-Fisher distances for about 60,000 galaxies. And hopefully um, it will be combined with the Westerbork Northern H1 Sky Survey, which will give us the Northern Hemisphere as well as the Southern Hemisphere from Wallaby. So this should give us an all-sky survey of really homogeneously selected galaxies. So this will be a really nice survey for doing peculiar velocity measurements, including bulk flow measurements. Now, both of these surveys haven't started taking data yet. So what I'm doing at the moment is simulating these surveys to try to predict how well we can use them to measure cosmology. So um, how do you simulate a peculiar velocity survey? Well, you need to start with something like a n-body simulation. So I'm starting with the Millennium simulation, which I showed before. And um, this has semi-analytic um, modeling applied to it so that we have information about where the galaxies would actually be. Um, and we also know their velocities because we know the velocities of the underlying dark matter um, field. So uh, once you have your galaxies from an n-body simulation, you can apply the survey selection function. So in this case, this is the selection function of SkyMapper. So each of these red squares is a field of SkyMapper. So you can overlay this on top of the n-body simulation to select, um, which gives you a sample of galaxies that would be observed. And then you can apply um, a detection criteria for measuring your um, distance indicator. So in the case of SkyMapper, it would be um, the, a detection criteria for measuring supernovae in each of these galaxies. And so you know the, the radial velocity, or you know the, you know the total velocity um, of the galaxies from the n-body simulation, so you can easily find the line of sight velocity um, if you place the observer at a certain location. And so then this gives me this, which is my final uh, simulated survey. So each of these dots is a supernova, um, and this is for over five years. And so here, red means the supernovae are moving away from us, and blue means they're moving towards us. 
And just to show, this is um, what the redshift distribution of the simulated supernova survey looks like. Um, so at the moment, we're going up to a redshift of 0.11. And one point with peculiar velocity surveys is you can't really go to much higher redshifts than this because um, as you go higher in redshift, your the peculiar velocity component of the total velocity becomes smaller and smaller, and so your signal to, to noise gets lower and lower um, as the redshift increases. So beyond a certain point, you really can't measure peculiar velocities above the noise. And the idea is that once I've made these simulated surveys, I then apply different statistics for analyzing the peculiar velocities. So first of all, it was a bulk flow, which I mentioned. But there are also other possibilities, like the velocity correlation function, comparing the velocity field with the density field, or measuring an angular velocity power spectrum. Um, so that's it. This is a really exciting time for peculiar velocity um, cosmology because of these upcoming surveys. Um, we have a number of surveys coming up, as well as 60 FGS, which has already measured a large number of peculiar velocities. And hopefully, later this year, I'll be uh, publishing a paper that will show how well these will do measuring cosmology. So yeah, that's it. Thanks.